girls. Uh, this is me. <laughs> I'm here at Baptist Beaches, and um, I just thought I, I'm not going to keep this video up. <laughs> this is a temporary video just to talk to y'all today. But um, I came in here in a dark place yesterday, and even though I got up in the morning and I was reading my Jesus Calling book, and it said, I am a God who heals. I heal broken bones, broken bodies, broken minds, broken hearts, broken lives, and broken relationships. And I'm going to read you the rest in a minute. And so I, I believe all that. But I had a lot of issues going on. And I had, I didn't know what was going on with my head. I've had these horrible headaches. And I was very congested. I couldn't breathe. And I, I just didn't. And, and I had some previous lung cancer, you know, stuff going on, some heart things going on. And I just felt like I needed to get in here and let, and which they do. If you ever need to go to the hospital, you need to drive all the way to the beaches. It is the best hospital in the city of Jacksonville. And I've been to all of them. <laughs> it's really the best. They are wonderful down here. And anyway, um, and they all seem to be Christians, everyone so far, you know, so, and even the not, they're just, they're just kind and, you know, they're just loving, they're just really good. But anyway, so, um, so they did, they, you know, they ran all the tests like they're supposed to do and they started giving me treatments and my BP was up, it was up to 200 yesterday when I came in. Of course, they put this cuff on you and they, you know, make it hurt so bad and then they go, how's your BP? <laughs> Went up to like 200. But they're having a, still having a time trying to get that down. And so I think that's probably my headache problem and I don't know what's up with that, but God knows, right? And so, um, but since I've been in, you know, um, I started reading the scriptures and they gave me an MRI, which they said they found nothing and I believe that there's nothing up there. <laughs> so, but uh, that was good news. And um, then the lung thing, they said, you know, that, that was, because you're very active and healthy, that, you know, you can just be treated with immunotherapy. So that's the good news, and it's just, it's not, it's just an oral drug. And so, um, but I'm still believing in the total healing by the name of Jesus for that, too. Because I don't think God wants to bankroll my account for one. And so, um, but anyway, I'm going to read a little bit more here in this Jesus Calling because it says, my very presence has immense healing powers. You cannot live close to me without experiencing some degree of healing. We know that. However, it is also true that you have not because you ask not. I went, ah. You receive the healing that flows naturally from my presence, whether you seek it or not, but there is more, much more available to those who ask. The first step in receiving healing is to live ever so close to me. And, you know, we all try to do that as much as we can. The benefits of this practice are too numerous to list. As you grow more and more intimate with me, and it's a time thing, it's a process, I reveal my will to you more directly. When the time is right, I prompt you to ask for healing of some brokenness in you or in another person. And, you know, coming outside of ourselves is always the best thing, too, when we pray for others. The healing may be instantaneous or it may be a process. And, you know, I've told you about, like, I've had a miracle healing with the congestive heart failure. And others, I've had to, you know, go through the process of treatments and stuff. That is up to me. Your part is to trust me fully and to thank me for restoration that has begun. So, um, God's in the restoration business, y'all. And, you know, what is in the Psalms, it says that he not only heals us, but he restores us back to our youth. So, I think he's done that a few times for me. And, um... But, you know, the, the world gets to you, you know, my job and, and, you know, we get hurt. Some of the people that you love the most, they hurt you the most, don't they? They don't mean to. They don't. And, um, but they're hurting too. And so there's a lot of that. And I was sort of in a depressed, not depressed, I was just in a wounded. I love that book by Nancy Weishi, if you haven't gotten that, called Wounded No More. After I read that and I start feeling wounded again, you know, I, I'm reminded of what the words that she had in that book and the scriptures and stuff. So, but anyway, that's a good book. So, but what God has also led me to do is to go to Psalms 91. And we all know the Psalms. And this is from the um, Passion Bible. So it doesn't read, you know, like the King James, which I, I can maybe memorize that. But um, it 
says, and it starts out because this is, I guess, David talking or singing. When you abide under the shadow of Shaddai, you are hidden in the strength of God Most High. And then he says, he, he's the hope that holds me, talking about himself, and the stronghold to shelter me, the only God for me and my great confidence. Then he turns to us and he says, he will rescue you. And the rest of the whole psalm is you. Then he will rescue you from every hidden trap of the enemy. And he will protect you from false accusation and any deadly curse. And you know, cancer and all the sickness and disease, it's a curse. His massive arm, and you know, I, I think Cassandra told me the other day, she said, I want to die God's way. I don't want to die, you know, the devil's plan. And I, that really stuck with me a lot, Cassandra. That was, it really hit me hard in a good way. His massive arms are wrapped around you, protecting you. You can run under his covering of majesty and hide. His arms of faithfulness are a shield, keeping you from harm. You will never worry about an attack of demonic forces at night, nor have to fear the spirit of darkness coming against you. Hey, let me finish this up. Don't fear a thing, whether by night or by day, demonic danger will not trouble you, nor will the powers of evil be launched against you. Even in a time of disaster, with thousands and thousands being killed, you will remain unscathed and unharmed. This is so awesome, y'all. You will be a spectator as the wicked perish in judgment, for they will be paid back for what they have done. And it goes on and on, and it says, God sends angels with special orders to protect you wherever you go, defending you from all harm. If you walk into a trap, they'll be there for you and keep you from stumbling. It's, it's just, the promises of God are so awesome. But the Lord reminded me that he wanted to bless all those Hebrews in the wilderness. But he couldn't because they didn't have they didn't have faith. They didn't believe. But the Psalms is saying, if you believe, all this is available. And then it ends with, I'll answer your cry for help every time and pray. You pray and you will feel my presence in your time of trouble. I will deliver you and bring you honor and I will satisfy you with a full life with all that I do for you, for you will enjoy the fullness of my salvation. And so, you know, Jesus loves you so much, you know, and so we just need to stick to it, hang in there. You know, your prayers have been so awesome, and I know you that God has answered all these prayers because I'm, I'm hopping out of here tomorrow, and <laughs> better than when I came. So I appreciate you. I love you guys, and Jesus loves you so much more. I'll see you later. Have a good meeting today. Love you. Bye.